Everybody. My name is Jarrell Connor and also known as the Red R. So I've directed, shot, animated, I think three or four music videos for the artist known as Jivo over the past few years. Also worked on some of his live shows and in various different capacities, uh, designed the album artwork for his final album called Wink. I first met Jivo, it was January 12th, 2008. So it was like, uh, I don't know, 14, over 14 years ago. I remember the date because it was my birthday and I had two events that night. One was an album release party for an artist that I was referred to from a friend. I didn't know him. I met him at the release party. And then I had my birthday party with a bunch of people I invited. And then one went poorly and the other one went well. So the album release party went well. So that's when I met uh, Jivo was at that release party. The actual idea for doing a documentary, um, that came from my wife, Kaitia. It was like five, a little over five years ago. We were planning and prepping for Jivo's DICE performance. It was uh, D-I-C-E. Uh, I think that was with the uh, Dreaming in Color album. And it was a, a huge like extravaganza of a performance with orchestra and live graphics and the projection cube in the center and two events, two different venues. So it was a lot going on. I was in charge of creating all the graphics, all the visuals, time lapses that were gonna be projected on screens and projected on this three-dimensional cube that sat in the middle of the concert. My wife, she was singing live during the performance. And she had the idea that like, hey, wouldn't it be a great idea documenting this whole process of this journey? And so flash forward a few years later, knowing that this is his final album, I figured like, like what better time to do and produce some kind of retrospective on the longevity of his career. To really let the world know all the work that's gone into it behind the scenes and kind of from where he began to where he is now. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Growing up, my mom uh, used to call me Rajo, kind of like a pet name. And then everyone started calling me Rajo, like among the Sri Lankan community. Mm -hmm. And I figured, when I f actually, when I first became an artist, I was just going to go as Rajiv, but in the South Asian community, there are other Rajivs. And so uh, growing up, people used to call me Jivo in high school. And it's actually, it's, it's the, the, the ending of my real name and the ending of my nickname, Jivo. Oh, so nice. Rajo, Rajiv combined. 
When I think of Rajiva, I think of sheer determination and hustle. I mean, this is somebody who started off life in the midst of one of the bloodiest acts of genocide of the Tamil people in Sri Lanka. He was born in Jaffna and then fled as refugees with his family to the United States. And in America, he started off his journey here on some of the toughest streets of LA. He then loses his mom at a really, really young age of nine. And through that adversity, with the help of his dad, his brother, his grandmother, and the extended family, he um, goes on to graduate UCLA. He gets a corporate job. He produces seven music albums with some of the best um, people in the music industry. He starts a business that's flourishing, that they're even thinking about expanding. He marries Lydia and has two beautifully kind uh, children. You know, when I think of where he's been and where he's at and where he's going, it's, it's grace, but it's a whole lot of determination and hustle. I think one of Rajiv's greatest contributions is his ability to be such a champion of people. And he does that by telling the truth at all costs and being very committed to each person's God-given potential and them reaching that potential. You could see this interwoven through all of his music, from his first album to his last. He is so committed not only to the truth, but also to the very thing that God is doing and sharpening and building in each person. And I think it takes um, a real, it takes a lot of love to champion people unto a way that is not afraid to tell the truth, to get into sticky conversations, um, and to kind of leave the truth there with the person, whether they like it or not. And I think that's one of his greatest contributions to, um, to everyone around him who knows him and his greatest contribution in his music, I believe, is that it's something that's lasting and goes well beyond a conversation um, and it kind of just lingers and stays in your head and in your heart continually. You tell me all the time to stop talking about God. How am I going to stop talking about God? Are you nuts? One day I'm going to die and I'm going to see him. What's he going to say? that I made songs like Lil Wayne for money. I already got a house. Time that we start making music that's fresh. I'm, I'm saying, let's make some fresh music. But let's do it with purpose. When Kanye West came out with Jesus Walks, everybody said, what the heck are you doing? And he won a Grammy for that, for best rap song of the year. How come Jeevo Zero and One can't go platinum? It starts today. This is my album release party. So to you music industry reps, I love you. But this is a part of love. You know what it is? No thank you, sir. I'm much wiser. That means I'm not ever, ever, ever going to change my musical content. Don't tell me how to dress. Don't tell me how to act. Don't tell me what to sing about. Don't tell me who to sing with. Don't tell me that my band is too, is too colorful that we got too many, too many different types of people from all over. Don't tell me that my genres are too mixed up. Don't tell me I can't sing and don't tell me I can't rap because I'm gonna keep writing songs over and over again. And the more the music industry is against me, the more I'll get more righteous in my songs. I'm gonna stop right there. I think of someone that knows how to expand the moment expand people's ways of thinking. He calls you to think beyond your current situation, beyond yourself, to see a trajectory of what God wants to do in your life, how God wants you to touch other people's lives. Rajiv is 38 years old, and I've known him for 34 of those 38 years. And when you get to know someone for that long, you really get to understand what their tendencies are and how they are like. And so whether good or bad, um, he has given those tendencies up to God. And he has let God put a work in him. He has evolved and he has grown so much. Looking back at the last 13 or 14 years, the one word that I would say that sums everything up is seed. Because everything in my life comes in seed form. I never see the full picture, uh, but I just see this tiny, tiny thing, it's very invisible 
to the naked eye, to the to the naked dream. It's very invisible. But if you put it in the ground, if you cultivate it, something special happens. I don't feel like I'm the most talented artist, rapper, singer at all, I'm songwriter. I think I have a very limited set of talents and they're all in seed form. But for some reason, because I'm willing to use it and invest it and work on it, um, things seem to sprout up. So the one word that sums it all up is seed. When I think of Rajiv, or more affectionately called as Rajo for me, I think of a person that is truly trying to make an impact on this world. Um, a person that is constantly changing and learning and making the best of what he considers to be his greatest song. I've known Jibo for about 16 years. Uh, the first time I met him was at a conference in UCLA. And I've known him now in these 16 years to be a person who's much more than meets the eye. I know that with him in, in the persona of Joe Jibo, a lot meets the eye, but there's more. And one of the things that I really like about him is that whereas other people, as they become bigger, they become fluffier, they become more puffy, in the sense that it's their external persona that actually gets projected more and more. And most people are wanting to impress, they're wanting to make an impact upon the world outside, they're wanting to become more larger than life. The thing about Jivo is that I found that over the years, he's actually become more and more concentrated, become more and more solid. He is more concerned about who he becomes as a person rather than as a name brand or as a projection of everybody's kind of desires and celebrity. I was just there for a year and a half before my family was forced to immigrate to America. Um, we came here because there was a civil war there. In Sri Lanka, there's two races, the Tamils and the Sinhalese and the Tamils are the minority race and they were, they were being wiped out of the city because of reasons that we probably can't get into now because of the time. <laughs> but uh, essentially, they came to my house, they burned it down, they threatened to kill my, my mother uh, and all sorts of things and my brother almost died in, in, in war and my grandma in the midst of this whole commotion at the house. And uh, after that, we were like, my parents decided <laughs> we're not staying here. So my uncle, who happened to be doing music in the United States, sponsored us and we came and lived with him in, in Pasadena. And uh, that's where we're at today. When I think about Jibo, I think about two things. I think about his undiluted honesty and his ability to always choose the most excellent thing. So not just the excellent thing, but the most excellent thing. And I'm so grateful for Jibo's music because essentially to me, his music takes the cries of our human heart and it intersects it with creativity from the divine. And we have this amazing fusion of what comes out as this beautiful music artistry that is so unique. So I, I've known Rajiv for about 30 years now. Um, and for better or worse, uh, he's a man of faith and a man of conviction. Um, and I actually envy the fact that he found his true love, uh, his purpose and his passion at such a young age and continued to work hard um, uh, to make his dreams come true. Um, not a lot of people get to know what their purpose is at that age and not, not, and not a lot of people are driven enough to actually try and, and, and work through the obstacles and challenges. On my very first album, on track number one, I have a lyric that says, when you make a move, only God gets the wink. And so wink has been a theme that has been significant in my entire career, in my entire life, really. Um, and it means a deep affection and a profound understanding between two people. And I think uh, when God gives you a wink, it doesn't only, it's not only a secret that's for you. It's not only... Um, affirmation that you can proceed or move forward but he can trust you to the point where he doesn't have to scream at you or shout at you all he has to do is glance your way and you know you have to make the next move and um this is this is 
this is really the crux of the album. Wink means to have a profound interaction, a profound understanding between you and God. And when you have that, you don't need the cosign or the applause of anybody. You can just move forward with God. Some time ago, I sat with a woman who was leading an organization and she said to me, you know, if you aren't living out on the edge, you're just taking up space. It sounded kind of harsh at the time, but I came to really understand what she meant by that. When I, when I think of my friend Rajiv, one of the things I think about is how he's willing to live out on the edge. A lot of people don't, don't have the courage to, uh, don't have the clarity of, of why to move toward the edge. Um, with Rajiv, I've always seen a guy who's got real clarity as to why he wants to be out on that edge, and it's not for him, it's for others. It's about making a meaningful contribution, and he does it in his own unique Rajiv-style way in every area of life. When I think of Jivo, uh, immediately what comes to my mind is innovation, vision comes to mind. Somebody who dreams extremely big, and when other people stop believing what Jivo believes, Jivo keeps believing until it happens. So I also think of him as somebody who sees that vision in someone else. So he's looking at you, he's looking at me, um, not just as we are, but I believe as God has uh, called us to be. That's part of his big gift, is that he can see things not just as they are, but as God has called them to be. When, when we were little, uh... My mom, we used to be fascinated with basketball and baseball trading cards. So one time, and we were really poor, and they were only like 50 cents at the time at like Save On or something like that. So when we got some, it was like the best thing in the world. So one time, my mom took a pack of cards and she put it on the pillow. And she was like, oh my God, Rajiv, come, come, come now. And we're like, what? She's like, there's a huge spider under the pillow. And I was like, I want to see. And I went like this, and it was like three packs of basketball cards, and that did it for us. So that was the best gift. And, uh, when I think of Rajiv, I think of a few things. Number one, he's wisdom beyond his years. He's able to add so much depth to conversation. He brings in so much profound insight. Uh, that, that's one of his trademarks. Number two, he's sincere and authentic. Uh, you've never seen uh, Rajiv try to appear to be somebody he's not, or try to act in a way that that is not true to himself. I always felt that you, are, you get what you see with Rajiv. And number three, he is a prophetic voice. He can speak truth boldly to society. Uh, and he speaks it with love. And that amazing balance that I've seen uh, from his life, I've been inspired by it. As I think about my baby brother Rajiv, known to the world as Jivo, I'm so excited about the man that he has become. He is a brilliant artist. Um, he is a voice in the wilderness. He is a world-class lyricist. And he is a modern day prophet to our generation. As I think about the hundreds and thousands of lives that he has touched over the course of the last 15 to 20 years, his six albums and now his seventh album, Wink, they tell stories of what your life could be if you believe in a God who's willing to radically invade your life and do wondrous things. He's taught us to push the envelope. He's taught us to dream in color. He's taught us to become invisible in the light of God and become an endangered species. He talks about a God who can take us from zero to one. Um, basically, Rajiv has elevated the game for his family and his friends and the entire music industry. This is really the final album because I always wanted to do seven and this is album number seven. And I just realized um, a couple of years ago that when I wake up in the morning, I don't think about music. I don't obsess over it. Uh, I'm not fascinated by the idea of Jivo anymore. Um, it's not something that consumes me, and maybe this is something that comes with age or having children, um, but I'm more excited about um, the passions and the purposes of the people around me. And um, I think music is a seed uh, whereby many things grew out of. So 
no matter what I do next, music is always a part of it. It's a seed. It's just that the fruit looks different. And um, I'll always approach everything as a creative. But in terms of Jivo, in terms of telling people that they have to listen to me or um, engage with my product, that was something I was never comfortable with, even from day one. So I feel like this is the perfect time to um, end that chapter of my life and see where else music will take me. It just may not be in the form of Jivo, but you will see it in everything that I do. When we see people in this world that are making impact, um, something that I, I see oftentimes is the grit, the continuation of perfection, wanting to be learning always. And I think that's a really, really powerful thing. So excited to see what that looks like for him this year and, and all the years to come. I think that one thing about him is that he has shown me over the years that again and again and again, he has chosen to be a person, a person of God. Not just any person, but a person of God. Not just a gifted person, not just a successful person, just a person who's popular, but a person who's a person of God. And because of that, I found that while other people's trajectory seems to become fluffier and fluffier, he has become more and more solid. And sometimes it looks like he's getting smaller and smaller, but uh, I believe that that's actually greater and greater. Rajo, one of my top 10 memories of all time was me and you in Sri Lanka, uh, in Jaffna to all places, uh, taking stage and rocking the crowd. I'll never, never forget it. Uh, it was a top 10 memory of all time. But no matter what people call you, Rajo, Rajiv, Jivo, you will always be Raj A. Nonchalant to me. Pick up, bro. I know a lot of folks who want to make a difference in a lot of areas, but really they lack the intensity and focus to do it. And at the same time, the, the ability to not take themselves so seriously. Uh, Rajiv is all of those things, and I am grateful because of that intensity and that clarity uh, and that honesty. I'm better, we're better for it. I am grateful for his contribution in my life and life so many. Difference maker, out on the edge, not taking up space. Finally, when I think of Rajiv, I know one thing for sure, the best is yet to come. Things are just warming up and all of us who know him as friends and as colleagues and so on are about to see greater things in the future. He's done all of this, being true to his music, never willing to compromise, and always saying that the substance of the man that you become should never be compromised. The substance is more important than the end goal. So here's a salute to you, baby brother. Go get him. Jivo, God has undoubtedly interwoven our paths for, for years now on, on numerous occasions. And I'm glad that he did. And he has been leading both of us on our journeys um, respectively. So here's to all the success, the blessings, and the purpose that God has for you specifically as this chapter closes. And also for the new chapter that we see that will be opening next, whatever that may be.
always thinking about you when you're thinking of me. Glow of the dark, oh you glow of the dark, oh you glow of the dark. Let the clouds move as you I see. I'm always thinking about you when you're thinking of me. You glow up the dark, oh you glow up the dark, oh you glow up the dark. Let the clouds move, it's you I see. Light up my life, oh you light up my life, oh you light up my life. I'm always thinking about you when you think of me. You glow up the dark, oh you glow up the dark, oh you glow up the What does the future hold for Jivo? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's my answer. The future doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that I'm able to live in the present, that I'm present to my family, I'm present to my friends, um, I'm present to every single word that God tells me, and then I just do. I don't think too much about what may work or, or what could be successful. I'm not success-driven. Um, I'm just driven by what I feel like God says in my spirit. And then whether it sounds ridiculous or practical, I just move forward. And that's what the future holds for me. Um, in terms of Jivo, the future holds nothing for Jivo. Jivo is done. Um, but the future looks very bright for Rajiv. <laughs>